No, 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 no. T I G E R S. Fight, Tiggies, fight, Tiggies, fight, fight, fight. Mike, it's not even a top a thousand moment all time. Okay, Tommy, shut the hell up, man. Mike! Oh, of course, he... I'm gonna go with the right answer. It's Ryan Eads of the Baltimore Orioles. He only he's only wore the number eighty for uh, um, eight games. He's only one of two players. You know what? No, no, I'm not gonna take this. <laughs> Welcome back to Go Chat. We are back with episode 109. If you are new here, smash that subscribe button. If you're not, welcome along to the journey. We have another great episode for you guys today. As you all know, and since we went into that 100s. Uh, over the 99 mark, we've been doing the go to the state. And now we are on the state of Illinois. Last week we had Georgia. This week is Illinois. A lot of great picks. You could go with the player from the Bulls, the Bears, uh, ew, the right White Sox, the Cubs, and the Blackhawks. A lot of great different professional teams. I'd love to hear all your guys' picks. Um, Tommy, I'm going to start with you here. Who are you going to yeah. go with? Well, I'm going to go the baseball player, of course. You got two teams in that city. So, uh, well, I mean, in the state, I know it's for Illinois as a whole. But um, so we got Tim Anderson today, <laughs> is my pick for the go of the state. I think, you know, we all know what an electrifying player he is, plays shortstop for the White Sox, 286 lifetime hitter, 91 homers. Got, he has a lot of speed, great defender. Um, you know, he's been an all-star silver slugger, won a batting title. He's done a lot early on in his career, only played six seasons and, uh, he's only getting better. So, uh, for me, it's Tim Anderson and maybe not where he is today, but I think that, um, you know, the way that that organization set up, we're going to see him winning for many years to come. So, uh, great player. And I think he's going to get even better. Um, so you definitely threw a curveball at me, Tommy. I was not expecting that. Uh, Connor requested to go last, so Mike, I'm going to have to go with you next. Yeah, Tommy, I'll, to be honest, I don't even think Tim Anderson is the GOAT of the of the Chicago the White, White Sox, Sox right now. I think that would be Jose Abreu if you had to pick one. But well, uh, Jose's done more in his career, but he's been around a lot longer. So I don't know. The, the way I see it is that overall, by the end of the careers – Tim Anderson's gonna put together a better career than I think Jose Abreu. Well, Jose's had a tremendous career. All right. Well, you know, you can't argue with Tommy there. Uh, but you you picked the wrong guy, anyways, because um, it's Patrick King, three time Cup winner. Uh, he, he's won an MVP. He's won a Pearson. Won a Smythe. Won the Calder. Won the Art Ross. I mean, this guy has averaged a, over a point per game for eight of the last nine seasons. He's an offensive mastermind, um, magician with the puck on his stick. I mean, it, yeah, sure, he has some liabilities defensively, but what he brings on the offensive end and what he has brought to Chicago um, throughout his career, I mean, really being one of the main reasons why he uh, Chicago has three Stanley Cups. I mean, they were an absolute struggling franchise before him and Jonathan Tay stepped in, so it's got to be Patrick Kane here. Uh, yeah, I'm going to have to. To agree with you there, Mike. He was my go number 88, so there's no reason why he wouldn't be my go at the state of Illinois. Even at the age of 33, he's still playing like a top notch level. It's it's actually insane because you look at Jonathan Taves, and he is not the Jonathan Taves that we once know knew he yeah. was. But Patrick Kane is still playing on that top level. I mean, last year he had a very good year on a really bad Chicago team. He seems like he's the only one that's looking up on the Chicago Blackhawks alongside uh, Alex DeBrinkett. Uh, but like you said, Mike, he's pretty much dominated in every facet of hockey, uh, winning the MVP, winning uh, Stanley Cup three times. There is no reason why he should be uh, second or lower than that on anyone's list in the state of Illinois. And I honestly think so highly of him that I think he's the best American hockey player to ever play in the NHL. Connor, you're last. You wanted to go last. I would love to hear this pick. You guys know I'm not the biggest of hockey guys. Um so it's going to surprise you that I actually have Patrick Kane pulled off here and I was going to go with Patrick Kane from the start. I know it sounds a little bit crazy considering you two went with Patrick Kane and wrote up all the stats. He was my pick from the start, you know, just looking at the resume. Obviously, I don't know exactly all of these, all of these trophies that he won are for, but 
no, it's just a great representation of how good of a player that he is. You know, Matt says he's one of the best American hockey players of all time. I've, obviously, I'm going to agree with Matt there. I mean, this is like your cousin, right? Patrick Kane, Matt Kane, something <laughs> like that. No, I mean, yeah. you know, I, I, what he's done is incredible. You know, winning, winning any, you know, championship three times is incredible in itself for him to win it three different times in the most grueling sport in the world, I would say um in hockey maybe not most grueling but physical with having to be on skates I can't skate to begin with so having to skate and then hit people and then try to shoot a puck it's incredible so yeah I'm gonna go with Patrick Kane I mean hockey is like one of those sports like you, you could go around like toss a football or like go around and shoot a basketball you can't just hop on skates and you know start going out and shooting and all that stuff I was talking about that with uh someone this past weekend so that was interesting that you brought that up um I don't know if it's definitely up there in terms of grueling, obviously football and all that stuff, but I'm shocked you picked Patrick Kane. I I, I texted Matt that I thought you're going with Khalil Mack. Here. It was definitely, it's definitely Khalil Mack was totally an option for me. You know, he's got a great resume. He hasn't done enough. Patrick Kane's the man. There you go. I mean, yeah, Mike, as a concussion, I mean, that's just some of a hockey. Oh yeah, um, exactly. I, I'm, I'm on this episode right now with a concussion from playing hockey so you know getting cross-checked right to the chin so there you go i was like what is he gonna mention that like he's had like injuries and like currently oh yeah i've 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 broke my wrist you know have now i have concussion not not really like too many major injuries um but uh definitely definitely grueling i mean patrick patrick kane is a short guy too and he sometimes beat up he got once he got just absolutely hammered into the boards and broke his collarbone against Nashville like five years ago. It's a tough sport. You know, I think I messed this up. I think I should have went after Tommy to give you guys more of the surprise factor rather than going last. I knew you guys were going to pick him. I should have went before you guys. I messed yeah. up. Um, but yeah, it's Patrick Kane. Um, and I, Matt, now that you mention it, he is like a smaller guy. And before he came into the league, they were, like the NHL really didn't believe and these guys under six foot, like 180 pounds, he was really the first of that type of hockey player. He's allowing, you know, guys like Johnny Gaudreau and now Cole Caulfield to come into the NHL and succeed and excel because these smaller guys are able to do it, even though the game is so physical at the NHL level. And Patrick Kane was really the first of his kind in terms of that. So that's another reason why he's the GOAT of Illinois. I think uh, I think we're all on a good track, Tommy. Tommy's Sorry. on his own track. I'm not gonna say it's a bad track. I'm Jesus oh, on his own man. track. Hey, Tim's a good player. Yeah, Tom, he, he is. Yeah, Tommy dances to beat up his own drum. Could 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 we mention Matt Nagy? I think he could be a go to Illinois. Like the Wolt. Yeah. Maybe the Wolt. All, all right. right. This is going to conclude the go of Illinois, and we are going to get into the hottest sports topics coming up next. (laughs) Welcome back to Go Chat. We are going to transition into Ithaca football. We are all a part of Ithaca College of Students, so we're going to go a little local here for this episode. We're going to be talking about the Cortica Jug. Now, if you don't know what the Cortica Jug is, well, it's basically, I don't understand how you don't know it, but it's the biggest Division III football game there is ever played uh this is the 62nd annual cortica jug between the ithaca bombers and the Cortland red dragons uh Cortland is ranked number 14 with a record of nine and zero undefeated bombers are ranked number 18 with a record of eight and one and bombers have won the last three jugs and they lead the series 42 33 to three kickoff is saturday which is today at noon in Cortland. guys we all live for this game i mean it, it's the biggest game and our school's history and uh, every year. And two years ago, we were there at MetLife. We all were there, right? Yeah. We all were there in MetLife. And now it's going, we're going to an even better, better place, Cortland. <laughs> Absolutely big dumpster. Game, it was a big game. It's a big game, guys. Connor, I'm going to swing it to you first. Give us a little breakdown of this game. It, it's going to be a very interesting game. And, you know, Talking about Ithaca, you know, they still have a chance to win a Liberty League championship and still go on to, you know, be in the, the NCAA championship. You know, need a little bit of help. There's a big game, RPI versus Union today. Um, so a lot of Ithaca's eyes will be on that game. But no, I mean, this game's huge. It's huge. You know, 
they've, they've played three of the same opponents this year, you know, Brockport, Alfred, Buffalo State, all teams won, you know, and none of the games are relatively close. Cortland beat Brockport 31 to 10. Ithaca, that score was 23 to 8. Alfred, Cortland won 47 to 3. Ithaca won 34 to nothing. Buffalo State hasn't won a game in three years. Cortland beat them 58 to 9, and Ithaca won 51 to 7. So, I mean, it's a very, it's going to be a really interesting game. I'll get a little bit more into, into deeper numbers in just a little bit, but I mean, it's a huge game for, for both of these teams. Obviously, both ranked in the top 25 of Division Three. Looking to get a spot into that NCAA Division Championship uh, tournament. Looking to be NCAA champions. I mean, shout out to Buff State. <laughs> <laughs> They're so oh. bad. They're so bad. Oh, I didn't know that they haven't won a game in three years. Interesting. That's, uh, that's, that's a lot. Yeah, it is a lot. <laughs> uh, Tavi, I'm going to swing it to you next. Um, what are your thoughts on this game? Pre-thoughts and some analysis here. Yeah, I mean, I'm excited. I mean, Connor did a good job breaking down the game. But like you said, I mean, for our schools, it's the biggest rivalry there is. Um, you know, 62nd time they played for the Cortica Jug. So, um, and, you know, like you said, I haven't had it in a couple of years. Last time was at a big venue, MetLife Stadium. Next year, it's going to be Yankee Stadium. So I think it's exciting to have uh, – you know, one of these games on campus, it'll be the only one during our time in college that we're actually going to have it at one of the two campuses. Unfortunately, uh, won't have it on the South Hill during our time here. But, um, you know, I think it's great. I mean, uh, both schools, you know, the fan bases are going to be out in full force and uh, it'll be exciting. I mean, and, you know, I am i don't know as much about the, you know, the history with all time meetings, but I, I would bet that it's tough to find a time where these teams were both as good as they are today. Um, like you said, Cortland undefeated, Ithaca just one loss at eight and one. So, uh, you know, I think it'll be a great game. Couldn't ask uh, for a better game here. And uh, it's going to be great. I mean, it's definitely interesting seeing the results because a lot of this has been streaks. It's been really been based on streaks. It, like I said, Ithaca's on a winning streak of three. Cortland was on a winning streak of seven, I believe, before that, and then Ithaca was at three, two. So we'll see if have Cortland can change the um, change the history here and get back on their winning streak, or Ithaca's going to extend theirs. Um, but yeah, like you said, Tommy, there's there's been a lot of great games, two overtime games in 2005 and 2006, but these are two very highly ranked teams, two very great teams. Um, so it's going to be interesting to see what happens on uh, today during this game. Mike, I'm going to finally throw it to you. Uh, what are your thoughts on the game and pre-analysis? Yeah, I mean, it, first off, it's going to be so exciting. I mean, these teams, like Tommy said, this is probably the first time in their history they're both ranked as highly as they are right now. These are two very, very tough opponents. You know, I was excited about going to the game. I got my ticket here. Fortunately, can't go because of my concussion. But, <clears throat> you know, I'm looking forward to watching the game on uh, TV and stuff like that. But I think one thing to point out with Corlin is they haven't really been battle tested. They've just been steamrolling opponents all year. And that could be in due part to how good of a team they are. Like, I'm going to give credit where, where, where credit's due. They've absolutely dominated everyone that they've come across, right? But um, Ithaca has been battle-tested. They've lost, you know, a close game to RPI that they arguably could have won, given, like, some coaching decisions and a, a missed last-second field goal. But they bounced back the next week, beat Union, who's ranked around number 10 in the nation at the time, by multiple scores, right? So I think I think Ithaca will win this game. Um, you know, obviously it's going to be a hostile environment going into uh, such a heated rivalry. Rivalry um, with you know all those fans in the stands ready to go wild and all that stuff. So it's it's going to be an awesome game. It's going to be a close game, but I think Ithaca is going to come out on top due to their experience this year. Uh, with tougher opponents, which Cortland just has not faced many of those. Yeah, no, they really haven't. Um, uh, Cortland has faced a combined record of 32 and 47 this year, while Ithaca has been playing a lot of several nationally ranked teams like uh, Union, Hobart, Hobart 
uh, Brockport, those are three of them. I believe the only three, two, but um, it's definitely going to be interesting to see what Portland can bring out um, to the field. I mean, obviously they got that home field. They got that home crowd. Crowd's going to be wild. Um, it's going to be insane. I mean, um, going back to the 2013 riots post Cortland game, there's like 60 people arrested um, or 30, sorry, 30 people arrested. That's not a lie. Um, so we're, the fans are definitely going to play something here and uh, being home, it's, it's going to be huge for Cortland. Uh, but I do believe that Ithaca is a stronger team and, you know, you could call it a little biased, um, <laughs> but you know, Ithaca's only loss was the RPI. It was a bad game, bad, honestly, bad play call. Yeah. Um, towards the end of it especially and I think that if they played RPI again they would win that and you know they really showed Union what Ithaca can do to uh at that season finale well home season finale um but you got to give credit where credit's due like you said Mike Cortland's undefeated so there really anything can happen here but for myself I'm going to take Ithaca it's just mm -hmm. pure bias honestly too no, I mean go ahead Connor I think you have to look at that court or that Cortland quarterback, the name of Breeze Sagala. Breeze as in Drew Breeze and his older brother, who is the quarterback for Cortland 2019 in the MetLife Stadium, named Brett Sagala, as in Brett Favre. Both kids were named after the Hall of Fame, soon to be Hall of Fame quarterbacks. Um, and, you know, Breeze Sagala has set records at Cortland, most passing yards, most touchdowns, best completion percentage in Cortland football history. So he's definitely going to be someone to look out for um, throughout today's game. Could carve up that Ithaca defense. Yeah. But, I mean, they, they did hold Union to seven points, I believe, right? They defeated Union 26 to seven off the top of my head, if I'm not mistaken. And I don't know what Union was ranked at the time, but they were ranked within the top 15. To beat a team by almost 20 points, that's, you know, ranked above you, ranked in the top 10 teams in the nation. That's extremely impressive. And obviously, Breeze Sagala is going to come in but and, and play a good game. But Ithaca does have that stout defense, um, probably ranked somewhere near the top 10. They're only allowing eight points per game, especially against those tougher opponents like RPI only gave up 13 points. Against Union only gave up seven points. Um, against Hobart, they did give up 21, but still that's nothing to scoff at at the same time. Uh, I think one key for Ithaca, they have to come in, they have to punch Cortland in the mouth early, you know, quiet the fans down, really turn this into an actual football game and, and, instead of a instead of like a, a scruffy battle. Because if that happens uh, with the fans on Cortland's side, they're just going to win. Yeah, I mean, you even look at the Ithaca stats, um, defensive stats. There have only been allowing 162 average yards per game, passing six touchdowns. You know, and he, you can say that Bree Sagala is better than the quarterbacks that they've played. That, you know, honestly, there's a good chance that that's true because how good uh, Sagala is. But at the end of the day, you can't disregard it, or you can't discredit this defense. I think Ithaca's defense is going to be the main part of their game, and I think that. If they can, it is going to be a rainy game. I would like to note that. And, uh, you know, you think back to MetLife, the kicker, you know, Nick Bahamande, we all love him. He's a great kicker, phenomenal. Had a struggle to get in MetLife uh, there, which, you know, different environment. Um, I totally understand that. But I don't know if kicking is really going to be a, a type of thing for Ithaca or Cortland on, with the rain. And we're going to see that. And I think that that's going to be huge. But it's going to come down to the passing defense for Ithaca, I believe, because I think that their defense is better than their offense. And you could correct me if I'm wrong, but I think uh, A.J. Wingfield has had very good games, but there's also been some rough games from that offense, too. You know, I'm going to be honest with you guys. I think defense defense gets thrown out of the window here. This, this is going to be an offensive game. Please. Yeah, I, th I think it will be a shootout. You know, both of these teams are so good defensively. You know, Cortland's only allowing 5.7 points on the defensive side of the ball. But, you know, they're also averaging 42, uh, putting up for offense, 422 yards a game. You know, Ithaca's averaging 30 points per game. So while the defenses for both teams have been really good, and you can look at the teams that they're playing against, you know, these offenses are extremely electric. You know, we've seen Ithaca multiple times this season, one play, 60-yard touchdown, that's their drive. They had the ball for 10 seconds, and it's a streak down the middle of the field to Andrew Vito for a touchdown. 
or to, to Michael Anderson or to Julian Dumaga. You know, they, they are so quick paced, you know, and, you know, they lost Jalen Leonard Osborne to an injury. So it's going to be tough to not have your running back there. You know, you got Dante Garcia stop it, stepping up. You got Hines stepping up. I think it's really just going to be that offensive type shoot up. The defenses, you know, I think they're going to go into this game with a bend, don't break mentality. You know, we know points are going to get put up. Obviously, the forecast, the, the rainy weather could change that a little bit. But I, I truly believe points are going to get put up. And I think it's going to come down to ultimately who has the ball last is who's going to win this football game. Yeah, I mean, you might looking at the history, you know, you probably aren't going to be wrong because of how high scoring the history really has been between Ithaca and Portland. I'm seeing a lot of 40 point games, I'm seeing a lot of 37s, a lot of 30 fives. Um, but I, I think the rain is, I think the weather is going to play a lot. And I think that it's more going to be a, we're going to, we're going to be looking at the mistakes. And I think that this game is going to come down to who makes more mistakes, to be honest. And that obviously like that, that probably comes down in hindsight. That sentence I just said probably comes down to any football game because you really think about it. <laughs> happens. But I think that in this game, crucially, the mistakes are going to be what's what's going to make this game, especially in the rain and especially with the weather. Now, if it if it, I'm pretty sure it's 100 percent rain. I don't think it's like 60 percent or anything. I, so I don't think we're looking at any leeway here. I think it's definitely going to be rainy. Um, so I think that's going to play a huge part in this game. And um, I mean, it, it surely could be a shootout. Um, but. I mean, we'll we'll see. If this if it is a shootout, it's going to be this year because how great these two teams are. You know, you 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 mentioned Wingfield. This season has been filled with with you know inaccuracy and interceptions, but also with a lot of greatness. You know, he played his best game of his season, potentially his career. You know, last week against Union, didn't have an interception. His only game this year where he did not throw an interception. Um, so it, it we we talk about mistakes. Ball's going to get wet. You know, he's got to be able to control the ball. You know, their first possession in that RPI game that they, they ultimately lost to 14 to 11, first possession, he threw an interception. Can't let that happen. You know, you got to got to be able to control the ball. You know, we look back to the 2019 Portico Jug game, Joe Germanario, obviously. A lot of speculation he might have just come to Ithaca just to play at MetLife Stadium. No, no certainty on that. But, you know, he didn't, didn't make any mistakes. He had five total touchdowns in that game, 400 total all-purpose yards in that game. So I, this Cortland defense, it's good, and it's going to be able to pick up on, on mistakes. You know, they've only allowed four touchdowns on the defensive side of the ball all year. So, so it's going to be really interesting to see if Wayfield makes mistakes and if Cortland can capitalize off of those mistakes. For sure. Tommy, you're going to be there uh, part of the Ithacan. Is, yeah. Are you going to get any, uh, any access that we don't get or no? Is that not how it works? Well, I mean, I'll be up in the press box, so thankfully I'll be warm. I don't have to worry about oh, the wow. weather too much, which is going to be great. Uh, but no, I'm really excited to cover it. I mean, it's going to be a great experience, like we've been talking about. Uh, you know, the arguably the best rivalry in Division Three. So, uh, really excited to cover it. But uh, yeah, it'll be a great day. I mean, thinking back to last year with MetLife, it was a game on College Game or two years ago. Sorry. And MetLife, it was a game picked on college game day, and I'm pretty sure they all went with Cortland. I think they did, yeah. Yeah, because I remember Barstool Ithaca just eating that up. Yeah, Um, or maybe one. Go ahead, Tommy. Oh, I was going to say, I think maybe one person did pick Ithaca. I'm not sure who, but. Here was the thing with that game was that Cortland came into into that game undefeated again, and Ithaca had lost their last, had dropped their last two games against RPI and U. Yeah. You know, this is completely different for Ithaca. You know, they lost to RPI, then they didn't bounce back, and they also lost to Union, where Cortland was coming in red hot. You know, I, I the, both of these teams are coming in red hot. I truly believe it's going to be who can punch each other in the mouth, who's going to be able to adapt to these circumstances. You know, obviously, it's going to be a sea of red. We are treading into enemy territory. It's going to be in Cortland. It's going to be wet. It's going to be played to their strengths. You know, it's going to be a really interesting game. I haven't given a game pick, so I'm ultimately going to give a game pick. I do believe Ithaca will win this game. Uh, score 32 to 28. As I said, high powered, high offense. Ithaca is going to have the ball last. They're going to score. They're going to win the game. Uh, correct myself. Actually, Desmond uh, Howard, Chip and Joanna, and Lee Corso went with Ithaca. Kirk oh. Herb Street was the only one who didn't go with Ithaca. And that's oh. what I remember is because Kirk Herb Street didn't go with Ithaca. He went with Cortland. Um, but no, they were seven and two Ithaca, seven and one Cortland that that game. I'm sure next year uh, in Yankee Stadium they might be doing something similar yeah, to that with college game day for sure. Um, 
my game pick, I'm going to go with Ithaca winning this game, of course, like I said. But I'm going to go with a lower scoring game. I'm going to give it a 20. Let's see, i got to think of this in my head. I'm going to go with 21 to 16, Ithaca. Yeah, that's. I was going to pick something similar like that, like I said before. I am going with Ithaca, too. Um, I think I'm going to go with uh, 21, Ithaca, to 17. So one point off. <laughs> I'll go right. I'll go 28, 21, Ithaca. All right. So Tommy's go. got a, Tommy's got a clean. I got a clean, clean game. He's got a clean score. All right. I mean, we're just going to have to see who wins it. Um, I'm sure if you guys are listening, go Bombers. You probably you guys probably don't even really know what the heck we're talking about, but go watch it. It's the biggest Division three game that you'll see in this year. Any final thoughts? Well, isn't there another huge game going on between Ithaca and Cortland next week, Matt? Oh, yeah, the Cortica Mug. <laughs> flag football champions, Ithaca Bombers. Going up against the flag football champions on Cortland. You'll see myself quarterbacking that game. Unfortunately, you can't see it on TV, so you're going to have to go to Ithaca. Or you're going to have to go to Cortland, excuse me, <laughs> 7 p.m. next Thursday. I'm pretty sure that's the 18th to watch Toon Squad destroy some Cortland Red Dragons. That's that's gonna be a great game. It's a quarter of mug, so we might get a mug if we win. We'll see. Oh, you guys are gonna get a great mug. I have no no doubt in the two and squad. Yeah, no, I don't know either. They they have a really good quarterback, very accurate. He's he's on a hot streak too. Hasn't thrown an interception since his second game. Um, so are I'm expecting. Talking, are you talking about yourself? I'm the third person. I'm talking about. Myself. <laughs> Um, oh, I'm expecting a lot. Henry Bulkley is a great player too. Um, he's been the quarterback's favorite weapon slot. He, he hikes the ball and he's a receiver then. So it, it's going to be a big game from both those guys. All right. We'll be definitely one to watch. Obviously, if you do want to, if you enjoy what we just talked about, about Cortica and want to go watch the game, it's going to be streamed on Ithaca and Cortland's athletics website. So you can go to Cortic or CortlandAthletics.com. You'll find a live stream there to watch that or IthacaAthletics.com. You can find the live stream there. We did pick this game. This game is not going to be a part of go picks. And we're also not going to pick go picks on this episode today. We have a game that uh, for last week that we're going to pick. Um, so we're going to get into our goat of the week next. Welcome back to Go Chat. We are back with the goat of the week. We look at the leaderboard. Last week, do you guys know who won? Me? Tommy won. No way. Tommy won by a significant voting, too. I just checked it today. You got nine votes. The next person up got four. Wait, Tommy who did I win? Oh, so MVP. Oh, that's right. See, I, I forget I because I never win. But. I can't believe Mike White didn't get it. Tommy, it's your ninth win. How excited are you? I'm incredibly excited. I mean, how many episodes have we had? Oh, <laughs> we had like 708 and I've only won nine of them. It's terrible. But Well, well we don't. We didn't have a go to the week for every every episode. So I don't, I don't know how. On, we're on like 60 something go to the weeks. Okay. I mean, still not great, but. And you uh, won you won just about 17% of them. You know what? I'll take it. I'll take it. It's a great batting <laughs> average, 170. <laughs> oh, All right, Tommy. You won. You got the floor for your go of the week this week. Yeah, well, I'm certainly not gonna repeat. No way I'm going back to back. I'm gonna pick Aaron Judge. Uh obviously we're in the offseason. Yankees haven't played since October 5th, but he did win a silver slugger on Thursday, put together a really good season, uh, hit 287, 39 homers, 98 RBIs. Um, he was just great. I mean, we all know how consistent he is uh, when he's on the field. And this year he played 148 games. And the only time uh, where he really missed games was when he was on the COVID list. So uh, he was able to stay healthy for the most part, put together a really good year and uh, took home a silver slugger. So Got to go with Aaron Judge for the go to the week. No, it's probably not going to win, but it's all Tommy, right. Tommy, let me ask you a question. How many other players on Thursday night got a Silver Slugger Award? Doesn't matter, Tommy. There's 17 other people that are happy. <laughs> but, <laughs> but at the same time, Aaron Judge is the man. We got to recognize him today. All right. 
Well, well, that pick literally does nothing. Uh, he's probably going to get one vote at most. Um, Hear me, Goldstein. I'm sure he's got me. Does he still vote for me consistently? I don't know. We're going to go in rever- reverse order of the leaderboard, so Mike here next. <clears throat> well, first off, I want to say Jacob DeGrom. Totally got snubbed of a silver slugger. Um, anyways, to the actual goat of the week, the unsung hero of the Arizona Cardinals, James Connor comes over from Pittsburgh on a veteran minimum deal, and he balled out this week. Chase Edmonds got hurt on the first snap. James Connor subs in, fills that workhorse role, and he goes for 96 yards in the ground, 77 through the air, and three touchdowns overall. And he is now leading the NFL in um, – <laughs> <laughs> and rushing touchdowns coming into the season. It, it, what is it? Week 10 now? How many people were going to say that James Conner is leading the, re, the <laughs> leading the NFL in rushing touchdowns? All right. It's James Conner go of the week. No doubt. All right. Uh, Mike quit with James Conner. Wood. Conner, I'm going to throw it to you. Who you got with the go of the week? I'm going with Josh Allen. But not the Buffalo Bills Josh Allen. Jacksonville Jaguars Josh Allen, who intercepted Josh Allen of the Buffalo Bills. Fumble recovery of Josh Allen of the Buffalo Bills. And a sack of Josh Allen of the Buffalo Bills. Matt's texting in the chat, Josh Allen Iverson. He essentially played like Allen Iverson because he just stepped over Josh Allen of the Buffalo Bills and didn't care. He had a great game. Showed who the best Josh Allen in the NFL was. Mike texted Josh Allen. Josh, this is confusing me, guys. Josh <laughs> Allen's the go to me. No confusion. All right. All right. Hey, well, all right. It's finally my turn. I, I got the winner here, too. I'd like to see how you guys could do a name off this one. It's Steph Curry uh, for his performance on Monday. More specifically, he did have a very good week in general. But Monday... I uh, can see Atlanta Hawks scored 50 points, 10 assists. That's a double double. <laughs> oh, that's a good. Okay. All right. All right. There's some better ones. But uh, Steph Curry, tremendous game on Monday. Then even translating that to Wednesday against Minnesota, what he's been able to do with that team is. <laughs> <laughs> What he's been able to do with that team is fantastic. Um, just seeing the Warriors, their best team of the league. I'm pretty sure they're nine and one, or no, they're ten and one. They're ten and one, and they're on a very hot start to this NBA season. It's, it's tremendous. And once they get Clay back, which is supposed to be around Christmas time, they're going to be the best team in the NBA by far. Lock that in, Golden State Warriors all the way. Steph Curry go the week. There we go. I finished. All right, let me let me read this chat now. <laughs> Step cooking up. Oh, all right, <laughs> Stephen. I like Stephen A. Curry. All right, that is. <laughs> you didn't even read it. You you're just laughing at the chat. I wish you guys could like see a, like a live stream of like the of the chat right now. Oh, I read I read Tommy's, and that's what I just started laughing. All right, any any final thoughts to conclude this episode or the go of the week? Tommy should quit go chat and go be a comedian because he will make millions of dollars. <laughs> well, thank you. I appreciate it. But, yeah, big weekend down the way. Glad we were able to highlight the core and jug today. And that's all I got for you. Go Yankees. Tommy, give us a nice peace out. Peace out. <laughs>